Jake Naso already taken was two face-offs shy of 1,600 in his career going against Anthony Gobriel, the transfer from Navy, and we're underway. Loose ball in the middle of the field. Gobriel's going to track it down for his possession to Virginia. Saw those ACC standings at the top of the show. You know, Virginia's got the win against North Carolina under their belt, but if you look at their in offensive college lacrosse, I thought there was deception there in terms of Boyden bringing the defense down almost past the goal line. The first goal he gave Boyden way too much respect. Boyden was not, not a threat. He was running towards the goal line extended. Now for this loose ball in the middle of the field, and eventually he goes to Duke after some physical play. Jack Gray comes out of the GP. Naso thought about taking a shot and lost it. Big wingspan of this Virginia defense. Got a player down. It's a Duke oh, that's player. Naso. Yeah, Naso. That's not good. Right in front of the cage. We mentioned how he's just been a warrior over the years. And he takes almost every draw for Duke. It isn't like they really have a one, a one and a one A option. They'll go with Cal Gerard if he's out, but Gerard's only taken, he's taken 47 draws this year, but Naso has taken so many draws for them over the years. Let's take a look to see where the injury occurred as the Duke staff continues to look at Naso. Twist that right ankle. Oh, you see yeah. it there. And, you know, Naso from St. Anthony's started specializing the face-off art as a seventh grader has enjoyed his time here in, in Durham talking about Coach Danowski as a guy who's taught him life lessons, yeah. you know, used lacrosse. We had a great conversation, the three of us, with Jake this week, and what a stand-up young man. You talk to teammates, everything they say about him is you know, blowing remarks in terms of the way that he works and puts so much into his craft. After Petey LaSalla graduated from Virginia last year, Jake Nason took the mantle of the, the most experienced face-off guy in college lacrosse by a lot. Yeah, he, he's been so stable. His dad, Steve, his mom, Stacy. A lot of toughness in that Nason family. Oh, yeah. Steve was a Marine and a New York City cop and a Suffolk County cop. and He taught his son at a young age when you start something, you give 110%. All effort. Yeah, you mentioned we had a great conversation with he and Aiden Benenza, of course, high school teammates at St. Anthony's with Brendan O'Neill, Andrew McAdory, and so now it's the two that now he's there. Matt, the son on the right, his dad, John, now got to go back to the drawing board on face-offs. We were talking uh, today over breakfast about, like, what do we think's going to happen? Uh, to take him out of the mix, understanding that he's the guy with the vision and the ability to make that pass. Face-off won by Virginia. That was Cal Gerard's first face-off attempt of the game. 41 they broke for his stick. Right. He's got to drop that stick. You're not allowed to continue to play with a broken stick like that. He does run off with it. This is something really to monitor, though, with, with Cal Gerard being thrown into the mix here. Jake Naso, we saw what it looked like a, an ankle injury. And Gobriel's been coming off an injury himself, the face-off man for Virginia. He's now just now getting to 100%. Right to the goal, goes shuts, denied. With that build, you just think of the upside. That shot placement was gorgeous. Guys in the truck, flip that one off to look at later because I love the view from in front to where he put that shot. Yeah, righty goalie, hug the opposite pipe. Again, we're going to keep an eye on the faceoff, Dodd. If you're just joining us, Jake Nasa was injured earlier in this game, and it's now Cal Gerard. This guy is... Unbelievable at finishing. You, you saw the inside presence on that last goal. For him not to be one of the 73 finals, let's not get crazy here. He's not a top 73 player in college lacrosse. It's a joke. The, the, the Tuarton Trophy is, is, it's not a club. You don't have to be in a club to win it. Everybody is eligible. Every player on every Division I roster is eligible to win and that figure trophy. what's there and a gorgeous question mark. Running upfield, he's able to free up his hands as he turns to the outside. That's not bad defense. That's exceptional offense. He steps away from the pressure. If you get into the body of Cole Kastner, he swallows you. So that subtle little escape, the step away from Kastner, allows him to get his hands free. 
Zawada, the three-time All-Big Ten club performer when he was at Michigan. He scored 119 goals at Michigan, transferred to Duke in the offseason. That's his 22nd. Now playing at the attack line with Williams and O'Neal. Naso's hurting. You could tell right. by the way he's jogging off the field. I mean, he's giving everything he has in the tank. That's given his teammates a lift, though, and they've got yeah, his best offensive numbers. And again, Naso is just soldiering on at the middle of the field right now, slow to get up and get off. That may be the last draw. Not only six goals, he had only six shots. He was perfect on the day. Uh, overall, the shooting so far in this first quarter for both teams has been off the charts good. You know, Virginia is a team, their top 10 scorers all shoot over 30%. Duke was able to get possession off that draw, ultimately with Luke Engelke taking it. So we'll see a combination of Gerard and Engelke on the day. As they so, that may be it to Q's point. He did not look good on his last draw as he hurt his ankle earlier. There's another shot from O'Neal. Crowd on their feet here at Koskinen. What a scene. They're poking the bear, Q. I love the emotion that he shows after this goal. And so did the fans. That uh, is a guy on a mission. Turboing through multiple defenders as if to say, uh, 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 I'm still king here. Prior to this game, right, the three losses, Quint mentioned the open, five total points. MVP of last World Championships in San Diego. Reigning Tawarton Trophy winner. What's wrong with Brennan O'Neill? The noise circulates the lacrosse world. A move like that shows me He's back. Two goals already today here in this first quarter. Duke up two. Um, O'Neal, such a threat on that lefty wing. Dyson Williams going to finish everything. And Zawada, his style fits yep. transition. And if you watch O'Neal, he's such a lethal dodger on slow breaks. Look out here. Jamison makes the save, stopping Cormier. To put a bow on the whole transition piece with Duke, when you give the ball to Brennan O'Neill in space, yeah, in space yeah. on a slow break, who is so accustomed when it's a six-on-six -six settled situation, Cotter, ready to support the matchup, they're in flux. Ben Ware was coming out of the box; he was just getting into the hole. Gobriel too quick on the whistle on that faceoff. McGuire bounces it way too high, but he has zero saves. And Angle had to take that face off. And a new goalie for Virginia, Kyle Morris, coming wow. in for Matt Nunes. Cool. Moving forward is outside of shots, where are they going to draw get? slides, yeah. Yeah, midfield production from a dodging perspective. That That's going to dictate this game. Angle if it's only shots from up top, yeah. it's not enough. Angle Key wins that draw. Neither of these defenses love supporting, sliding, or helping. They, they want to win matchups on the perimeter and stay at home. Defending perspective. Biggest question I American has a wealth of experience playing box lacrosse with the soft hands and the follow up. Biggest question I have, though, for this offense moving forward is outside of offense moving forward is outside of shots where are they going to draw get, slides yeah yeah midfield yeah. production from a dodging perspective that that's going to dictate this game angle. if it's only shots from up top yeah it's not enough angle key wins that draw neither of these defenses love supporting sliding or helping they they want to win match the goal line extended and i think when you look at this offense when it was clicking earlier in the season when they were averaging the 18 goals per game it was a ton of Zawada. It was a ton of O'Neal. We're seeing those two today. Gobriel wins the draw, but Virginia in a little bit of trouble here. Gobriel's going to have to be huge today. That will enable Virginia to make Virginia gets it back to a three-goal deficit and back to Gobriel. Ooh, man. Physical play. 
still comes out of there with it. Wilson. Thought he might have had McGuire open on the wing, opted not to attempt to pass. With the lack of depth, I me mentioned earlier, 20 and 23, to what we were mentioning earlier. If you have a guy like Balsamo who's played attack his whole life, he's going to play attack next year, let him operate from those spots and good things will happen. When you've played attack and you've dominated with the ball on your stick for, for your whole life, you know that you could handle pressure and the spots will open up. Thomas Colucci took that draw for Virginia. And you had McGuire lose his stick, couldn't play with it. Now Schellenberger with the top corner. He's trying to get his teammates fired up now. Makes it a three-goal deficit once again. This is a tricky situation. In hindsight, the Duke player probably should have played that ball, picked up his stick. The ball gets stuck in his stick and goes down to the turf. It's oh, a that's a tough one, it's, yes. a, it's a restart, but he's got to pick up his stick and get back in the action. You, yes. you know what I mean by that? So he probably should just drop the ball and retreat. I love the placement. We're, we're talking about some sharp shooting today. I mean, the shooting today has been completely ridiculous. And Connor Schellenberger, you see the emotion after that goal? Maybe that's his breakthrough here. And they need those kind of goals in terms of non-traditional six-on-six with the Dodgers not really operating from up top and drawing slides. Find those opportunities and we're not passing that to the other four guys that are out there on offense right there. But the rules don't apply because you know the big guy inside with the soft hands, even when he's losing his angle, he will eat a check and he will still have time with no angle to move a goalie and have some deception. But he's not one of the top 73 players in the country. That's just sticking in your crawl right now. I get it. I was going to say Tawartan nominee, Peyton Cormier. Corey scored a goal earlier. The extra pass, but no angle for Schellenberger. Millen runs it down. Got to get nine going. You got Schellenberger with the goal. How do you get nine going? In the field. Yeah, I, I told you I was here about 12 days ago filming a through X with Brandon O'Neill. When we were on the field, I told you, being on the field with him, I, I can't recall seeing someone that powerful, that strong, that fast, and that skilled all in one. Now, I've been around bigger guys. I've been around... Guys with probably softer hands. Been around some of the best shooters in the world. But to put it all to two total saves on the other end, Patrick Jamison has nine, Quint. Duke shot 10 of 22. Face off, yeah, face-offs, Cotter. I, th I think something that we've been watching intently. Naso, and Naso took that draw. So Naso got enough treatment multiple times within a dodge. That defender's always a beat behind you. Yeah, Look, at not Naso. Look at Naso come out of there with it. Now we need some help. Try to get it to Wilson. Ball's on the carpet. Naso still battling for it and gets it. And gets it to Zawada. In front, Williams can't finish. Keep it to Duke, though. Time passes. And seeding to the backside and finding those finishers. Naso battling at the faceoff dot. The most experienced Fogo in the entire country. And that experience is showing here as he is playing through an ankle injury. McGuire. Go, go, Leaving him alone. I thought he might step down. Instead, he backs it back out. Waits for a little help. Happen Dick comes on. I'm here at off the charts. It, the draft is the intersection between the college game and the pro game. And if you love Virginia lacrosse or Duke lacrosse or ACC lacrosse or Ivy League lacrosse, there are players in the PLL that you can root for. And we see stuff every week that blows our minds. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this year, once they start officially having the geographical locations tied to the franchise, short stick D middies that are so strong. Like, try Aiden McGuire on him. Try Jack Gray on him. When you have a pole in space, he showed you elite speed there, too. Thomas Colucci wins the faceoff. Hard cover because he has no clue what he's doing next. He's just reacting off of defensive pressure, and he has the stick skills to boot. Gobriel wins the draw, but then he just blindly throws it behind him right to Naso. 
Virginia had a little bit of mo there too, a two in a row, and now this is gonna be oh, oh stolen by Morris. I thought Nasa was gonna bury it right on the doorstep. Now the momentum back to Virginia. Here comes Gabriel. He's got Schellenberger on that left wing, but he doesn't get it to him. Now he gets it. Look at the tic-tac-toe. Jamison makes the save. Telegraphed it. Both sides. High to high. Not going to roll right off it. And like Michael it Leo did that against Aiden McGuire when Syracuse played Duke, too. He gets so physical that he sometimes he loses his feet and he kind of horse hooks you and you use that to your momentum. Oh boy, they thought they might have had Williams in front. Nakadori just couldn't quite get it to him. Kastner was all over the first quarter when he was pulled. That he comes with it. time. Yeah, that yeah, comes exactly. with time. Exactly. He's done a spectacular job over the last year really elevating that aspect of his game. So to my to your point, happen with maturity. Virginia Weyer come out, comes out of there with possession on the faceoff. Dangerous in front there. Williams steals it and scores. That's crushing. Coach Tiffany trying to stay positive on the sideline. I got to tell you, Ben Ware has had a season as good as any long pole in the country. Rugged, recommitted to playing tenaciously on ground balls. He's been everywhere. This is just a bad break for 44 and blue. This kind of stuff happens. He probably should have thrown that ball to the goaltender. Look at his reaction. Make the easy play is what it comes down to. Yeah, rule number one in defense, right? When you're being pressured, never throw where? To the middle of the field. Right, just like in basketball, never throw it, save it from going out of bounds underneath your own hoop. Because if something like that happens, and it's a turnover, it's an easy goal for Dyson Williams. And I was just about to say, Virginia has kept it in that, since it was 6-3, right? Since the first quarter, they've kept it in that three goals, four goals, three goals, maybe once or twice getting it to two, but they haven't gotten any close. Hill School in Canada, four years in Michigan. I think when he graduated, he was an all-time points leader. Yes, at Michigan Michael Bame has broken Led that them record to the since. quarterfinals. First NCAA win in the Big Ten Championship. Nay, so look at this. Is he going to shoot it? He is. It scores! That ankle's feeling a lot better now. Coach Dino can't believe it. This kid started, grew up in Shoreham Wading River, then he moved to the Sachem area. Had a, a heck of a commute. Hour plus drive to St. Anthony's High School, where not only was he a, a, a terrific lacrosse player, but he played the violin. Yes, he he did. didn't just play the violin, he was all county. He man. was all Long Island. Don't, violin don't shortchange him. There he is. <laughs> Good, too. We heard the videos of him playing back in the yeah, day. I and could he was. See. He was exceptional. He spent a lot of time in the offseason working on his offensive game. Took very few face-offs in the fall. Kind of rested the body, got the stick skills flowing, and saw pay dividends. McGuire, he'll shoot. Turned aside by Morris. You mentioned that commute, too. When you have a goal and you have a vision in mind. Whole year. Took us all the way to mid-April, but that reports very well for the rest of the year sitting next to a guy who felt like the Incredible Hulk, and he's <laughs> sweating through his shirt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he's smell me, smell smell me later. later. And now, Weyer trying to change matters, and he gets one back. So that fires up the Virginia sideline a bit. Again, we still got 11 and a half minutes left to go in this game, so it is not over by a long shot. And those clad in orange here at Koskinen, they know it. Junior, mountain man, Fierce competitor this season and so impactful on the offensive side where he's been given the green light. You know, he and Chismar and, and Chase Yeager and Joey Terenzi have almost been like a second midfield line for Coach Lars Tiffany. You're spot on. That's that's very astute in terms of your breaking down their their action and the journey of this season. I watched Ben Ware warming up a couple weeks ago at practice shooting the rock, man. He slings it. Kalichi to Schellenberger. Millen scores! Okay, two quick ones for the Wahoos. Make it, take it, buy one, get one free. 
Watch the release here by Millen. This is a thing of beauty. The Cavs striking in transition. Good scoop. I think, yeah, great scoop. I think Millen's going low here, Quint. And then he sticks it high. I think Jamison thought he was going low, too. Jamison drops his hands. Maybe he was going low, and the defender changed the stick trajectory there on the follow-through, perhaps. I mean, that, that was a thing of beauty. He takes one step up, and it's all wrists, too. There, there's no swooping motion there. It comes right off his ear. Got the flow working. His mom, Aaron, was a Hall of Famer at Maryland. She's probably like, maybe get a haircut every, sometime, son. Look at this. Off the face-off again! It's back and forth off the draw, and that's two for Naso. See his hands? Showing all of his teammates. That's two. <laughs> Deuces. Pinch and pop out the front side, and he's playing sweet music today with a pair. Yes. When I asked him, tell me something about you that might not be typical. He told us, I played the violin growing up. There he is, all county in action. First chair, showing the skill. All county on Long Island. Doesn't play it very often, though, around his teammates, because we talked to the Nens, and he's like, yeah, maybe I've, I might have heard him play it once when we were freshmen. That's a long time ago. I would love to see Duke come out of their locker room led by Naso playing the violin. Instead of the bagpipes for Notre Dame, it's, it's the violin. For the Blue Devils, a little bit of a different vibe there. Then this guy next to me is going